welcome dear students today we will be talking about muscles please subscribe the channel for not to miss any videos so muscle is derived from the term called mus which means mouse since the muscle looks like a mouse these terms are explained in my previous classes so you can please uh, th look through these classes where uh, i have explained in detail all these uh, areas i hope uh, i was explaining this in uh, introductory classes introduction introduction to medical anatomy classes and introduction to tissues as well anyway uh, coming to the classification of muscle we have skeletal muscles cardiac muscle and smooth muscle let's go straight away to the skeletal muscle the different terms which are used for skeletal muscles are striated muscle striated muscle somatic muscles and voluntary muscles so they are striated muscles they have uh, striations they are somatic muscles they are supplied by the somatic nervous system voluntary muscles they act according to their uh, according to our will and they are striped muscle as well let's uh, see the structure of the skeletal muscle it's a contractile tissue and uh, it's made of muscle fibers each my fiber is multinucleated and the nucleus is flat arranged at the periphery they are cylindrical shaped cells and they have a cytoplasm which is called a sarcoplasm which contains a lot of nucleus arranged at the periphery beneath the sarcolemma sarcolemma is the cell membrane of the muscle and they are inside the muscle fiber there are myofibrils which are which can be seen as dotted areas here now each muscle fiber so this area this is a, this is a muscle uh, fiber and muscle myofibrils can be seen in this which are arranged in bundles when one muscle fiber is focused it shows alternate dark and light bands dark band and light band a close view of a myofibril the arrangement of myofibril looks like this having myosin and actin filaments at some point only myosin can be seen in some areas myosin and actin can be seen together another point where actin filaments are attached with one another this is how it looks so it shows alternate dark and light bands dark bands are called as anisotropic band called a band and light band is called isotropic band called i band in the middle of dark band there is an h zone where only myosin is present at the center of the h zone there is another line called dark line m line in the middle now in the middle of i band there is another line which is like a disc shaped line called z disc or crossis membrane so the area of the myofibril between the two z disc is called sarcomere is a z disc z disc this area is sarcomere and it is the structural unit of the muscle fiber let's see the uh, classification of muscle fibers there are three types of muscle fibers slow fast and intermediate fibers which are called as red white and mixed muscle respectively so let's talk about type 1 fibers or slow fibers they have slow contraction and this can be seen in the postural muscles like muscles which are supporting the back the vertebra mainly erector spinae group of muscles they are red in color due to the presence of myoglobin and it has a well developed aerob 
aerobic metabolism and because of that and because of the myoglobin which has which it has it is it can act for a long time without getting fatigue whereas type 2 fibers are fast fibers as the name suggests they act fastly and they looks white in color because of less amount of myoglobin present in it and also the other uh, uh, issue with the, the fast fibers is that it act fast but it cannot act for long time so it get easily fatigued and the intermediate fibers are the muscle fibers which are in between type 1 and type 2 so intermediate fibers red muscle and the white muscle red muscle has lot of myoglobin and white muscle no myoglobin now intermediate fibers they are represented they are representing the type 2 uh, fibers fast fibers white uh, muscle which are relatively resistant to fatigue so they can uh, they are resistant to fatigue but less than that of type 1 fibers less than that of red muscle <clears throat> so red muscles can act for long time without getting fatigue intermediate muscle can act for some time without getting fatigue white muscles can act fast but they get easily fatigued so that is the difference Now, how do you name the muscle there are different ways to name the muscle first one according to the shape so the overall shape of the muscle is considered here and this muscle looks like a trapezium or diamond shaped so we call it as trapezius Now, according to the number of heads it is it has there is another way of naming it biceps brachii having two heads of origin similar muscle is seen in the thigh region posterior compartment biceps femoris which also has two heads now how it looks externally so by the appearance of it we can name the muscle semi tendinosus is an example where half of the muscle is tendinous another muscle which is deep to it is semi membranosus membranosus semi membranosus is called semi membranosus because half of it is membranous according to the location muscles can be named this muscle seen on the temporal region so this is temporalis according to the attachment where it is attached this muscle called the stylohyoid attached to the styloid process then to the hyoid bone due to, due to its attachment it's named as stylo hyoid another way is according to the action of the muscle adductor longus is a muscle which is present on the medial compartment of the thigh causing adduction so it is adductor and the muscle is long so called as adductor longus there is another muscle which is near to it called adductor brevis so the, this muscle cause adduction but it is a short muscle so it is brevis adductor brevis since this muscle is long and causing adduction called adductor longus according to the direction of fibers which are inside the muscle the muscle here is rectus abdominis where the fibers are running straight rectus abdominis again there are some muscle fibers or muscles that can be seen in the eyeball where again the muscle fibers run straight so these muscles are called recti muscles of eyeball muscle with two bellies and an intervening disc i mean sorry intervening tendon is called digastric muscle so there are two bellies and there is a tendon in between digastric gastric means belly so two bellies and a tendon now there are uh, two things uh, which are called as extra fusel muscle fiber and intra fusel muscle fiber extra fusel muscle fibers are forming the bulk of the muscle and that is the contractile unit of the muscle and that is force generating structure whereas intra fusel fibers it is also a part of muscle which is seen 
uh, buried inside the muscle and they contain afferent receptors for the stretch but they also have some contractile elements so extra facial fibers fibers are the bulky part of the muscle whereas intra facial fibers are seen within the extra facial fibers now supply of skeletal muscles there are motor fibers which is contributing of 60 percentage now before that let's see the uh, spinal nerve the structure of the spinal nerve so a nerve supplying a muscle is called motor nerve so we are talking about a motor nerve it's a part of spinal nerve spinal nerve is formed by the anterior root and the posterior root anterior root carrying the motor part of the spinal nerve so it's mixed nerve consisting of the three types of fibers so the spinal nerve is actually a mixed nerve where it has got um, a motor component coming from anterior root i mean anterior uh, anterior horn of the spinal cord whereas a posterior root coming from posterior horn of uh, spinal cord which is sensory in function the one which is from anterior that is motor in function similarly it has got one more component that is autonomic component autonomic component can be seen as a sympathetic and a parasympathetic system now in the thoracolumbar region spinal nerve is related to the sympathetic outflow whereas in the sacral region spinal nerve is related to parasympathetic outflow so let's see uh, the motor component of the skeletal muscle they are supplied by alpha efferents which are mainly supplying extra facial muscle fibers alpha efferents are uh, some type of neurons alpha motor neurons they are located in the anterior horn of the spinal cord now again we are in the motor uh, fibers there are some other neurons which are present again in the anterior horn of the spinal cord called as gamma motor neurons which is supplying intrafusal fibers or the muscle spindles muscle spindles are the intrafusal fibers and they refine and control muscle contraction and as i said before it has some non myelinated autonomic efferents which are going to supply smooth muscle fibers of blood vessels so the blood vessels which are present inside the skeletal muscles get supply from autonomic nervous system so that's why i said your spinal nerve contains three components motor component coming from the anterior horn sensory component which is coming from the posterior horn and a autonomic component that can arise from the sympathetic trunk or it can arise from the parasympathetic system in the thoracolumbar region it is sympathetic system whereas in the sacral region it is parasympathetic system anyway coming to the next sensory component 40 percentage is sensory here myelinated fibers distributed to the muscle spindle for proprioception also to the tendons so here the sensations are carried the type of sensations are proprioception so how the state of the muscle what is the state of the muscle whether it is contracted whether it is fully contracted all those things are received by the brain via proprioception so proprioception is that sense which sense the muscle state so that is done by the uh, spindles the intrafacial fibers so muscle spindles are spindle shaped sensory organs which are seen in the skeletal muscle and the spindle is innervated by sensory as well as motor nerves so there is uh, uh, extra facial fibers supplied by alpha motor neuron and gamma motor neuron supplies the spindle fibers also there are afferent nerves which are arising from the muscle spindle that goes to the central nervous system and muscle spindle act as stretch receptors so this picture will explain how the muscle spindle acts alpha motor neuron which is located in the spinal cord anterior horn of the spinal cord sends impulses to the muscle which has got extra facial and intra facial fibers extra facial fibers contract so because of the contraction the muscle spindle also get uh, some 
variation in the shape or it can get stretched and this stretching the stretched information so the sensation of the stretch that has been carried by the muscle spindle to the central nervous system and it is relayed in the posterior horn of the spinal cord now from here there are connections to the anterior horn again so the muscle spindle can regulate the activity of the alpha motor neuron by these fibers suppose the impulse has gone from here and it is reaching in the skeletal muscle extrafacial fibers so it is contracted now how much the muscle is contracted whether it has contracted fully or half so that has been informed to the brain via the afferent fibers which are starting from the muscle spindle and reaches the posterior horn now the posterior horn sends information necessary information to the alpha motor neuron if the muscle is not contracted fully it gives that information and so that the alpha motor neuron can again stimulate the muscle for its maximum contraction these are according to the need of the muscle so muscle spindle record and help regulate the degree and rate of contraction of the extrafacial fibers by influencing alpha motor neuron so this is how it influences alpha motor neurons now motor unit is a term where which represents one single or single alpha motor neuron supplying the muscle fibers so it is defined as a single alpha motor neuron supplying a muscle fibers so there are red color alpha motor neuron and green color alpha motor neuron the red one that supplies many fibers whereas the green one supplies only two muscle fibers so the green one can be called as small motor unit and the red one can be called as large motor unit because a single alpha motor neuron supplies many muscle fibers now small motor unit are seen where you need a fine precise movement like the movements of extra ocular muscles whereas large motor neurons here the force should be more but the the precision may not be very uh, good for example proximal limb muscles the muscles of the shoulder region there there are large motor neurons that area precision is not required but a coarse movement is required so we have a large motor unit in that area but the extraocular muscles similarly the uh, distal uh, muscles the distal end of the limb where you have hand muscles they need precise movements where you have a small motor unit where a single alpha motor neuron will supply only few muscle fibers now supply of smooth muscles there are two types of nerve supply to the smooth muscle first one single unit type and second one is multi unit type now the single unit type is a type of uh, nerve supply where a single knife nerve fiber reaches and they form varicosities in different parts of the a muscle and initially a single muscle is uh, contracted and because of the fused cell membrane of the smooth muscle the action of one smooth muscle is transmitted to the other because of that fusion fused cell membrane so this is called as a single unit type where a single nerve reaches and supplies whereas a multi unit type where each muscle fiber is supplied by single fiber single single fibers are supplying um, each muscle fiber this can be seen in vas deferens or ductus deferens which is seen in male reproductive system whereas single unit type is seen in intestine cardiac muscle receives autonomic nervous system which composed of sympathetic and parasympathetic sympathetic system is derived from the sympathetic uh, thoracic sympathetic uh, thoracic spinal segments uh, 1 to 4 and sympathetic ganglion is acting there whereas parasympathetic system is by the vagus nerve parasympathetic system 
decreases the heart rate whereas sympathetic system is opposite it increases the heart rate also the blood pressure when a muscle contracts it can shorten the muscle almost 30 percentage and bring some out the movement but this is not the case always there are two types of contractions isotonic contraction isometric contraction in isotonic contraction during the contraction of the muscle the length of the muscle is decreased as in this case whereas in isometric contraction the same muscle is acting in this action the length of the muscle is not changed but the muscle is contracting there are prime movers called as agonist which brings about the desired movement in this case person is trying to extend the forearm triceps contracts so this is agonist the muscle which is opposing the agonist that is opposing the extension is this muscle called antagonist and here it is biceps now this is other scenario where person is trying to flex so biceps is agonist and triceps is opposing it so it is antagonist there are other group of muscles called fixators and synergist they are almost similar but slight difference fixators will fix a proximal joint of a limb so that the desired movement can occur in other joint for example shoulder joint is fixed by deltoid so that the movements of the elbow can be possible and it can be done easily whereas synergist synergist are a uh, prime movers when a prime mover which uh, crosses more than one joint let's see about this uh, muscle here long flexor muscles they are very long and they crosses many joints they starts from here and they crosses elbow wrist uh, and intercarpal joints carpal metacarpal joints etc ultimately they reach the tip of the phalanx when these type of muscles when they are acting so since they are very long they have to uh, cross many joints so the unnecessary movements of the joints where it is crossing like the wrist now when this muscle is acting there is a possible possibility is that the fingers can get flexed at the same time the wrist also can get flexed so to prevent that we need to fix the wrist so they are called as a fixators they are called as a synergist synergist are a type of fixators they fix the wrist and they they fix the wrist in a slightly extended, extended position which are called as extensors of the wrist so extensors of the wrist are acting as a synergist for the long flexor group of muscles by which it can act better on the distal phalanges or the phalanges smooth muscles uh, i have explained uh, about smooth muscles in my previous classes so we can go through that cardiac muscle as well and the classification of a skeletal muscle according to the direction of uh, fibers also been explained now direction of muscle fibers classification yes you just go through that thank you